let's also get in abnesh roy the executive uh, director with novama institutional uh, so abnesh uh, first to start off with uh, how are you looking into the second quarter numbers that have come in for uh, the consumption space and when it comes to outlook do you think that the uh, core fmcg companies are better placed or is it the uh, higher higher end discretionary companies that are better placed currently sure thanks uh, so first uh, is outlook is better Yes, currently there has been a demand slowdown in urban, especially at the lower end. Uh, the urban slowdown is happening because of very high food inflation. Currently, if you see most of the vegetables, perishables, lot of the grains, etc., very expensive. So obviously, customer does cut down and he moves to some of the maybe smaller brands, regional brands, or he cuts down on consumption. Rural, there is a good recovery. In terms of outlook, if I see in the H2, we do expect almost every company to take 2 to 3% price hike gradually, and that will help in operating leverage. In Q2, if you see a lot of companies which uh, disappointed, for example, Dabar, etc., they disappointed because in Q2, there was a big impact of high rains on the juice business, for example. Even for paint company, if you see, there was an impact on the exterior paint. So that kind of adverse impact of the high rains won't be there. Also, the marriage season is going to be better. And that will help a lot of the discretionary demand in terms of gifting, in terms of paints, etc. So we do see that volume growth for most companies in H2 should be better. Plus pricing growth of 2 to 3% will gradually come back. Now, if I see uh, the raw material scenario, frankly speaking, I don't see that as a big negative because one, it is not very alarming. We have seen crude at $130, $140 also. We have seen palm oil, for example, at $1,800. Palm oil has gone up and some of the other raw material has gone up. So not every company, every category, there's a problem. There is sharp inflation in some of the segments. But uh, what happens is whenever sharp inflation happens, for example, in tea, palm oil, there is a sharp inflation. The market leaders always gain market share because the local players are not able to spend it up advertising. Plus, they go out of the market because they are not able to manage the working capital. So currently, our top picks will be essentially companies which are more rural because rural, there is a recovery and gradual recovery is sustained. Next four years, uh, the uh, coalition government is there at the center. Uh -huh. So we expect MSP hikes, a lot of the NRGS support, a lot of the freebies to continue. And the good part is a lot of the state governments also doing that. So okay. we like uh, rural focused companies more. Sure. So rural focused companies is where your focus is. But let me shift focus and talk about a company which has a lot more urban focus. And that stock is doing well in the trading session. I'm sure you've guessed it by now. It's Jubilant Foodworks up 9%. Do you really think it deserves that kind of, uh, you know, uptick in the stock price uh, given its performance? Sorry, um, uh, am I audible? Yes, Abneesh, the question on Jubilant Food works to you. Yes, uh, I think some uh, issue with the signal. So, yes, uh, we are uh, positive on uh, Jubilant Foods. Uh, yes, uh, the numbers were decent uh, in terms of delivery, very strong uh, growth, clearly gaining market share. So, I would say that sector, if you see, uh, Domino's has been the best performer and that's why the stock is uh, uh, doing well. And going ahead, we see market share expansion clearly helping. Uh, plus, if you see, QSR sector has seen seven quarters of slowdown. So, base is favorable. But when I say urban demand, there is a slowdown. Why is it happening? One is food inflation. Second is very high rentals also. Plus the bandwidth cost, the telecom costs have gone up. So it's more a market share expansion rather than QSR story coming back. So new net net in, in that space, Jubilant Foods is seeing interest coming back. But uh, overall, it's a market share gain in the delivery format and that should continue. So we are, we are uh, positive on the company. Uh, so, Abhinesh, when it comes to Asian pains now, uh, earlier there were a few reports which suggested that uh, competitive intensity uh, has been coming down in the market, but definitely the Q2 numbers do not suggest that. In fact, the management is also uh, saying that the competitive intensity could continue to remain high at least for the next uh, two years. So, how are you reading into this uh, Q2 numbers and do you even expect that there could be a, a single-digit growth in volume number when it comes to the second half of this financial year? So currently, if you see in uh, Q2, Asian paints volume growth was zero. I do expect that in H2, it should be a kind of 4 to 5% as a, as a second half. Uh, Q3 being a bit uh, lower than that, maybe 3, 4%. And uh, Q4, my sense is they should be around 6, 7%. Uh, Berger should be growing faster. So Berger is growing faster than Asian paint. Uh, if you see on a 4 to 5 year basis, the growth of Asian and Berger are very similar.
what had happened was asian paints grew faster and they took around 200 rupees market share in the earlier time frame but last three quarters uh, berger is doing a good job they are uh, growing faster than asian paint our sense is next two quarters that will continue uh, asian paints also needs to resolve its smaller businesses so there is some challenge there and uh, coming to grassing versus axo see grassing has come and now six months has happened we have not seen too much of disruption there in the festival season in fact it was quite uh, lukewarm i say, i would say in terms of their advertising in terms of the promotion so i think they are also going for the long haul gradual uh, scale up of the business the good part is axo noble is in the block uh, eventually we see grassim replacing replaced by grassim in one form or the other so we would prefer berger paints and indigo paints in paints Uh, versus Asian paints, Asian paints will be a laggard from a next six months perspective. Eventually, they will come back. It is more a base issue, and they are currently they are grappling some of the issues in their smaller businesses, putty and some of the uh, acquisitions also. Yeah. Okay. So that's why Asian paints and the increased competitive intensity there. I know you said that you are a lot more positive on rural consumption rather than um, you know urban. But Britannia, I mean, is it a buy at some levels? What's your own recommendation and target price? Yeah, we are positive on Britannia. It will be among our top picks along with uh, Colgate, uh, Marico, uh, ITC, HUL, etc. Uh, see, Britannia stock is correcting. Yesterday it was uh, it had corrected five percent. Today more because of that. Uh, investors are a bit concerned on the raw material scenario because palm oil has gone up and uh, uh, cashew has gone up, cocoa has gone up. my sense is uh, the sharp uh, government duty increase uh, is not something which will remain always we do see that in the in the coming months that should get reversed this these uh, sharp increase and and cut back by the government keeps happening so it is not that the uh, government duty will remain so high uh, second of course is uh, definitely the pricing growth will come back so britannia also if you see in q2 the volume growth was 8% but the pricing growth was negative i think h2 they, that should turn positive company is planning to take 4 to 5% hike eventually so that is on the positive side see currently what's happening margins if you see gross margin there will be some pressure but because of operating leverage coming back i think ebitda should be okay i don't think too much of compression on the ebitda margin is likely but whenever inflation happens in palm oil etc the market share gain for uh, britannia happens so that should also come back uh, from a market share so overall we are positive on britannia thank you all abnish thank you for joining and giving your perspective about the fmcg sector well with that let's slip into a short break and we'll be back with more news on the other side